Hey everybody, welcome back. A PCAP is a packet capture file. It's based on a library called lib PCAP. Uh, you're gonna see this everywhere. Most of the popular tools are based on this library. They use it for packet capture. Uh, so you've got lib PCAP, you've got win PCAP so that you can run it in Windows. And you're gonna find that most of these packet capture tools like Wireshark and TCP dump and all of these tools that we're all familiar with utilize this this library same thing with the offensive tools in map and everything i mean huge chunks of the industry depend upon pcap runs on windows runs on runs on mac runs on linux you know you can pick up files pick up pick up stuff off the wire pretty much anywhere with it uh, so definitely definitely powerful um, you will run into limitations with it really really high speed networks tend to give it some issues let's just kind of see how this set of classes go and then if people want to talk about more complex subjects we can definitely talk about some of those issues with that so send feedback and I'll do my best so the first part is actually collecting PCAPs. Now from the standpoint of threat hunting remember threat hunting is proactive you're not responding to an intrusion. You're moving around networks saying, you know what, let me plug into a network tap or some sort of inline packet capture device. So a network tap is a switch with a span port. So if you have traffic that goes into a switch, um, you know, traffic usually only comes out of uh, the port that it's destined for. So if you want to record traffic on a switch, you usually have to span all the ports to one particular port. So let's say it's a 24 port switch, you would span or mirror all the traffic on ports one through 23 so that they all show up on port 24. You'll hear some people call that a network tap. Uh, you'll also hear some people call it a mirror port. Um, and then you've also got um, packet capture devices that are uh, literal physical devices that you plug in and uh, they've got two interfaces and traffic goes through them and it records as well. Let's say, for example, you might go to a network and you might capture five minutes of PCAPs every hour for a 24 hour period. Now, on a network with a couple of hundred hosts, you know, you're going to end up with some really large PCAP files. Not uncommon to have PCAP files that are several gigabytes by just recording five minutes of traffic every hour. So this is what's leading to the whole reason why I'm showing this whole sequence of courses, because if you're hunting on the wire, you're not necessarily responding to a security event. So you're just looking for things proactively. Now, for the purpose of practicing, you may want to grab malicious packet capture files off the internet where someone has already categorized these as malicious PCAPs. So there's malwaretrafficanalysis.net, there's Threat Glass, there's Evil Fingers. These are places where you can get malicious PCAPs and you can practice with these. Now, again, they're good because they help you with dissecting a malicious packet. They're not really good at helping you deal with deal parsing really, really large segments of traffic, whittling it down into something that's manageable so you can hunt through it and look to see if something's malicious. And this is the reason why you're going to see that it's more important that you learn this skill once you learn this skill, then you can turn around and you can apply it to all these SIM solutions and traffic analysis solutions. Because if you don't understand PCAP analysis at its core, then a tool really isn't going to help you with trying to catch really difficult stuff. So that's the reason why I'm so fanatical about trying to teach you how to do this on this command line level with, this, with these rudimentary tools. So let's jump in. The first thing that I would say is, remember, like I said, you've, you've gone to a customer, customers told you that they've had issues in the past. You want to do some proactive looking around a particular subnet. So you inform them that you want to take packet captures for five minutes every hour for a 24 hour period or, you know, 48 hour period or a 72 hour period. You want to record five minute 
captures <clears throat> every hour. So you're not recording the entire hour, but you got a lot of traffic. And like I said, if the network is maybe a thousand users, um, you know, and you're doing that for a couple of days, you easily could have, you know, 20, 30 gigabytes of PCAP files that you have to parse through. And a lot of these um, analysis tools just really aren't made for that. It's, it's, you know, it's a needle in a haystack, or there's a really cool blog post with a cool title, needle in a PCAP, right? So the first thing that I run is PRADS. So PRADS, Passive Real-Time Asset Detection System. So the first thing that I do when I have a lot of PCAPs to rip through is before I even start trying to analyze them, I want to get an idea of what's in the environment. So you can use PRADS, which is really similar to some tools that we've known, for those of us who've been in the security industry for a while, a tool called PUFF, Passive Operating System Fingerprinting, or SAN, or SAN CP, right? Uh, PADS, there's a couple of tools that have done this. Now, for people who use Tenable Network Security, um, uh, Security Center, they've got a tool called PVS, Passive Vulnerability Scanner. It basically does the same sort of thing. But the thought process behind this is I just want to know what's out there. So I want to use PRADS to help me figure out, oh, there's some Windows machines here, there's some servers. What types of machines are out here? So PRADS is really, really easy. So PRADS we can install with um, the apt or the yum command in Linux. So apt for your Debian-based systems, Ubuntu, Mint, right? And yum for your Red Hat-based systems, CentOS, Fedora, right? So if you're using those types of systems, you can use the automated packet ma package managers to install them. I'm gonna build a directory, I'm going to download a suspicious PCAP file, and then I'm going to run PRADS against it. And then it generates a log file called an asset log. So with that asset log, I'm going to go through the asset log. What I like to do is I actually like to grep for individual things. So I like to grep for, you know, is it Windows? Is it Linux? And I like to grep on the SIN Right, so the session initiation, I like to grep for stuff like that. Um, if it's HTTP traffic, I like to grep uh, specifically for user agents. So you're gonna see when I'm grepping for the client, then I'm grepping for the user agent, which is when the browser makes a connection to a server, the browser declares itself and says, hey, I'm Firefox, right? That's in a field called the user agent. So I'll grep for the different user agents and then on the server that's responding back, I'll grep for the names of the individual servers when I'm looking in the reply traffic that's coming back. So this helps me just get a feel of what's out there. What kind of traffic is, is on the network. And that's really what you wanna do before you start hunting around for malicious stuff. You gotta get a feel for what's out there first. So we start sorting by what types of machines are out there. Oh, it's Windows machines. Oh, it's Linux servers. Oh, it's Windows servers. I like to do that before I start looking for malicious traffic. Remember guys, most people are thinking about threat hunting from the standpoint of you have a security event and you're responding to a security event, that's not threat hunting, that's incident response. If you're proactively looking around the network, you have to be able to get a feel of the type of network it is and the type of environment, what's out there, right? So that's what these commands are. All right, so let's jump in, let's do a demo, let's see what this looks like on the wire. So I'm logged in, this time I'm logged into my machine as a regular user, just logged into my machine as a regular user. So Prads is nice that I can run it as a regular user when I'm analyzing the PCAP files themselves. Now you can record traffic straight off the wire with Prads. I generally don't do that, okay? All right, so let's go for it. I'm gonna make a directory, CD into that directory. I'm gonna create the Prads directory and jump in there. And then I'm gonna download this file, wget for webget, and then I'm gonna run prads against this PCAP file, okay? It's gonna create this asset log file. So it creates this asset log file. Now you can see what it's doing. 
It's saying, hey, I've got operating system checks enabled on the SYN, SYNAC, Reset, and FIN flag. You're going to notice when I'm looking, I only do that pretty much on the SYN flag. Okay, so we're running Prads. You can see that it uses libpcap. You can see that it uses Perl compatible regular expressions. It writes everything to this file, right? Prads asset log, because I told it to write it to that file. And now this is where the signatures come from. So it's got a list of MAC addresses. It's got a list of uh, SYN connection rules. It's got a list of SYNAC rules. And now you can say, okay, these fingerprints, these FP files, are how it figures out this is what something is. And then it lets you know, hey, I've got operating system checks enabled for these fields and then for these types of services. So it counts the number of packets received, right? How many of them were VLAN packets? How many of them were ART packets? How many of them were IPv6 packets? How many of them were GRE, generic routing encapsulation? Right, so you can get a figure, you can get an idea of what's out there. Let's go look at this log. So if you look at the raw log itself, here's me looking at the raw log itself. So you can see the connection. This is IP address. It's making a SYN synchronization right connection here's the operating system fingerprint right and then for each of these you can see here's that synac it's doing a fingerprint here right here's another one it's a client connection and the client connection usually has that protocol overlay so it's above your layer 4 traffic this is your layer 7 traffic it's got the http user agent in here this is an example of a user agent Right, so you can see what version of Windows it is. This is what usually kind of helps you figure out, oh, it's Windows 7, it's Windows 8, it's Windows 10. Then you can see the version of Firefox. When the server responds back, you can see the server is responding back, oh, it's Apache Linux running on Ubuntu. You can use these things to get a feel of what type of stuff is out there. Specifically, like if you have rogue machines, maybe you've got the same type of machine throughout your whole environment. Maybe it's a specific kind of Dell computer. But if maybe your environment is all Dell machines running Windows 10, well, if all of a sudden you get a machine that's not a Dell machine, that's not running Windows 10, you know, you see that as a client machine originating a connection out, maybe you have a rogue device. So let's go through and let's look specifically for some of those things. So right here, I'm going to grep for SYN, that's the stuff making initiating connections, and I want to find specifically Windows and Linux machines. So here I can see those machines that are specifically Windows machines making that initial connection, that SYN connection. So you can see, okay, these are the ones running Windows. I might do the same thing for ones that have made a full-blown HTTP connection, right, by checking for the user agents. Right, so here we can see, all right, look, I've got a Windows machine right here, and now I've also got a Linux machine, right? X11 is the GUI, graphical user interface for Unix and Linux. So we've got a Linux machine in the network as well. Now, you might also grep for the server responding. Okay, so it looks like all the ones that have been responding have all been Apache servers on Ubuntu. But again, you might see IIS, you know, the Windows Internet Information Server, right? IIS, you might see, you know, uh, Nginx, Nginx, you might see some other types of servers out there. But this gives you a real quick down and dirty feel of what are we dealing with? Okay, these are Windows machines, these are Linux machines, they're communicating with these types of servers, right? Again, 
When you're going through large chunks of PCAP files for multiple subnets, you might have a network with you know, 20, 30 different subnets, each subnet having a couple of hundred users per subnet. As you do this kind of stuff and you're looking around, you wanna be able to get a feel for what's out there. So for me, that's my first step in threat hunting. When I go to individual networks, threat hunting on the wire, I should say, when I go to those individual networks, my first step, you can see that highlighted in red, my first step is get a feel of the types of hosts that are on the network. Then my next step, what I'm gonna cover in my next video, is I start going through all those PCAP files and breaking them into individual streams so I can analyze individual streams, right? So remember, my first step is to get an idea of the hosts that are on the network. What type of host are out here? What type of communication is it? Then, let, now that we've got that, let's start breaking them up into buckets. So that's gonna be our next video, Chaos Reader.